Hey YouTube, I'm going to make a video here on, it's basically what's come become of my very first video. I've completely recorded the project since then, but um, it's still kind of the same idea. I'll show you what's going on here. Um, I just spawned in the world. The way the world is generating, it puts me at zero, zero, zero in the world. It happens to be that I spawn way up in a mountain. I could also randomly spawn up in the air, but I have to fly up here for quite a while. Really like how it loads in. All of the loading in is now in a separate thread, runs at 100% CPUs, it's just absolutely constantly. But I'm okay with that. Four thread threads on my computer. Almost never use them. Um, yeah, you can see I have placing chunks here, or placing blocks I mean in chunks. Everything's updated on the fly. There are zero frames where you can see through walls while you're placing and uh, removing blocks. I put quite a bit of time into that to make sure that worked. You can also see each one of these chunks here is 32 blocks on a side. I changed that with a single header file in my program, but I've been tuning it recently so that it loads and runs a lot more efficiently. Um, as soon as the train loads in here, I think we're almost there. Yep, here's a bit of it. Um, I'm running the same kind of algorithm as in, in my very first uh, video, where it's called diamond square algorithm, and for each chunk you seed the corners of the chunk with random values, and then you inter interpolate between them, and at each layer you kind of add a random offset and it creates this really nice fractal train. But one of the really big problems I was having with that originally is that each chunk was completely independent of all the other chunks. Where each chunk picked its own random values that could be anywhere from zero to all the way up in the sky. And then the chunk next to it would be the same way. So you'd have really tiny mountains or you'd have to have really huge chunks. but Right now, you can see these mountains are really spaced out, and honestly, the uh, actual size of the height map chunks are almost from that corner of the world all the way over to this corner of the world. Um, I'm doing the same thing where each chunk has to generate its own height map, but it goes and gets its corners from a higher level height map that's generated along with it. So, that's what's been up with the train here. I'm using so many levels on the second level height map that that's where I'm getting this huge difference in train height. I could show some some different variations on that later. I'm also getting 120 FPS here. If I turn off my frame cap, I'll get about 2000 FPS, which I think is really nice for this many this many triangles. I'm not doing any kind of meshing algorithm. Each chunk, each face of each block, I mean, has two triangles on it not really doing anything about it. Um, the most recent thing that I've added is the way that this map is stored in the memory. I'm, I've added or implemented sparse voxel octrees so that each chunk is separated into eight eight spots, top left, top right, etc. Um, and then each of those is subdivided in the same way all the way down to a single block. And uh, if all of the blocks inside one of those eight chunks are the same, then it doesn't need to subdivide anymore, and it can save a whole bunch of memory. It was going down from a world in the side being the size being like six, seven, eight gigs, to being 100 megabytes. If my mountains aren't too crazy, you see up at the top here of the screen, I'm using 10% of the memory, so I'm actually using a little over a gig, but that's okay. Um, you see as I fly around here. All the chunks are loading in without my frame rate dropping at all. That's because I've got them implemented in a separate thread, or all the loading in done in a separate thread. So that was the first big thing I've done when I when I recoded this um, this whole thing. The code for this will be up on my website. My website itself is up most of the time, but the host name kind of changes, so I'll make sure it's updated in the description of this video. I should be getting a relatively constant one very soon. Um, 
but yeah, I am really impressed what I've been able to, to get done here. I was able earlier to load in a map that was 3,000 blocks on a side, which is ridiculous. It took o over an hour for it to load and uh, generate the whole Diamond Square terrain. Part of that was just because to get it to load I had to, to uh, make other parts of the program a little more inefficient where I couldn't tune the variables the way they needed to be tuned. But that's okay, um, yeah, like, it's a ridiculous amount of, that's like, what would that be, 3,000, a Minecraft world is about 600 blocks on a chunk, so 5 by 5 Minecraft worlds, and way taller than one. It's kind of, a uh, mind-blowing, to be honest. The whole placing blocks right now, it's, that was being done where because every time you you place a block the chunk that it's in has to be completely remeshed um, that was being done in the separate thread but the issue with that is if that separate thread isn't running fast enough then your blocks won't update very fast again when minecraft rehauled their um, rendering system to use modern OpenGL that was something that they did where uh, if that thread got hung up, your blocks wouldn't update right away, you'd have to wait a second. But I, I've moved that on to the main thread where only the chunks that are updated by the player are updated in the main main chunk. Otherwise they're always just marked as not current and are updated in the secondary chunk. Um, I'm gonna stop this this world here and change some of the parameters around to kind of show you what, what I can do here. So, this diamond square levels thing, this is this is the size in power of 2. So, for example, the 12 here would be 2 to the power of 12 would be 4096. So, the upper level height map is 4096 by 4096 different individual values. And each two values next to each other are the uh, corners of a chunk which is a 32 by 32 by 32 chunk, or a 32 squared height map. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of ridiculously huge, but it, it uh, really adds to the mountains. If I set this down to something like 4, and set the bumpiness down to about 1, I'll show you what this does. I set it in this loading bar, where instead of using new lines, I use carriage returns, and I really like how it looks. I'm going to add that into a couple of other things later. So yeah, this much much more toned down map, loaded in a lot faster, don't have to fly up for three years to get there. I also hope to be able to kind of transition from this level of map, where it's not super mountainly, into the mountain maps with a, uh, not exactly sure what, I could almost use Perlin Noise, kind of thinking about it, to uh, modulate the bumpiness. Because as long as the bumpiness variable is smooth and it doesn't have any harsh breaks, it should work where it doesn't create any sheer cliffs like this anyways. So yeah, um, some of the things that I have to work on, and you can see as I fly around the world here, I get some weird grid patterns. Uh, that's just from the way where it's unloading uh, chunks, I mean, from this side here over to this side, and every time it does, it updates all of the chunks around it. So as soon as this chunk is missing, it then updates the chunk next to it to draw on these lines, but then they don't really need to be there. So I just kind of have to make it smarter. But really, if I just sit in one spot, they correct themselves. So I don't really need to worry about it. Not for a while, anyways. Um. Yeah. The next things that I'm going to implement, I think... It's probably going to be hitboxes, so that I can actually physically walk around the world. Maybe a physics engine. I was working on adding a computer, actually a 6502 uh, CPU emulator. But I kind of just commented that code out and, and uh, haven't worried about it recently. I haven't been super into it. I've been more working on the actual map. But now that that's actually done... 
I don't know, kind of have to decide what direction to take with it. So, uh, yeah, that's the update video. Don't forget, if you want to check out the code, it'll be in the description. It's up on Git, so you can actually go back in, in history and uh, click on all, all of the different stages in the development of this binary. It's on Linux. Um, so actually, if, if you want to install Glue and the OpenGL libraries, if you don't have them, I'm assuming you do, and SDL2, you can actually just uh, git clone straight from repository or I download it as a tarball and there's a make file and it'll it'll be ready for you to run it yourself if you want to. So uh, yeah, check in the description for that.